All right. Hey, good to be with you guys. Uh, normally I'm standing, but uh, I have to tell you, I, I hurt my foot, so I'm not, I'm going to be sitting here. But hopefully I will get all the energy out that we need to, and uh, it's going to be a great uh, time to be able to spend some time together. Great to see uh, Gosh, uh, Barry and Michael, or Mike, and uh, Russ and Keith, David. All right, guys, so good to see all of you guys. All right, so there's three things I want I want to talk about just a little bit today. Uh, one, just want to make sure that you are uh, going to be attending. We've got uh, our summit that we're doing is a one day event, but again, as I was saying this morning in an early morning, uh, early morning. It's entirely okay if you come for just a few hours of it, or you want to treat it like a normal summit, great, come 12 to 2, you name it, whatever you want to do, however you want to participate, do it. Uh, we're asking for donations to uh, uh, charity uh, in lieu of giving the, the one-day event for free, but uh, that's entirely up to you. Either way, we'd love to see you there, and we're going to spend a whole day really working on the things I want to talk to you about today and the things I'm going to spend with uh, spend time sharing with you. So uh, good stuff. So, all right, with that being said, uh, this is an interesting market. As you look at the market, I just wanted to give just a, a little market update. So a couple of things. Number one, uh, the market is still very, very, very strong. And I say that from the standpoint of although there may be highs and lows in your personal business, if you look at the whole of the market, it is very reflective, and for some of you who are in the business at this time, some of you I know we're not, but in 2019 is about what we're doing in relationship to transaction count in and across the state of Utah specifically. So when you start looking at, well, gosh, you know, this market is so off, well, it's off, but also we had historic events in regards to COVID and interest rates and unheralded, un inexperienced things that we've never have had happen in the history of real estate. Uh, the level of increase in home values over a two-year period of time was over 47% in the state of Utah. I mean, that's never happened. On average, the average home values go up three or 4% in given years. So as much as people have thought that they're owed something, deserve something, entitled to something in regards to home values, more speaking to the homeowner, the fact is, is that 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 47 percent increase is is historic. I mean, it's never happened. I mean, the last time it happened like that was after World War II uh, and when the well, world, sorry, World War I. And two, right after the Great Depression, where they started to see values go up in such speed and, and velocity as we've seen. So I say that with you to you because 2019, because I was in the market, I was doing my thing. 2019 was a great year of real estate. I would consider it to be what I would call a normal year of real estate. And so just for perspective, I say that to you just to give you perspective that although the home sales across, let's just say the state, but specifically a majority of us are from the Wasatch Front and also St. George, you take those four counties of Washington County down south, Utah County, Salt Lake County, and Davis County, we're operating right about 30, 35%, not only organizationally, but we're operating that really according to the MLS in comparison years. So I love the fact that this market is requiring each of us to do what we do and to do it just a little bit better. But it's not an issue as to whether sales are happening or not happening. And although I'm starting to see some of the real high producing agents where they're calling or you know having conversations and calling even other agents and saying, hey, are you slow? Because I'm slow. And that's where I want to I turn this just a little bit. One, we have a very good market. And before I get too far down this, I wanna mention something. And I hope some of you are, are taking some notes. And what I wanna mention is, is that there really is three core things that have to be fundamental to our belief system right now. And I hope that you listen really closely to this. Here's the first one. The first one is that, that, that primary belief that you as an individual are the right agent, that you are the, the that you literally are the best agent and the right agent. Now I say that you may say, well, what do you mean by that? Right? Fundamentally, a declaration of your belief that is that that I believe that I am the best agent for the job. I'm the right agent for the job. And you say, 
Well, how important is that? Well, it's pretty important because what we believe about ourselves has so much to do with how we feel about ourselves. And what we feel and what we think has so much to do with what we say. And so when we show up to a particular buyer or a, a, a seller, fundamentally to just simply believe that we are the best agent for the job, I think is critically important. It was a fundamental to my career when I started to realize I have to convince myself that I'm the right agent. The second part of that is the second belief is, is that the belief that I am the best agent for the, not but only the best agent, sorry, that I can get the job done. I got ahead of my, behind myself there, right? That I can get the job done. So now think about that for a minute. I believe per, firsthand that I am the best agent for the job, the right agent for the job. I can even, you can, some people say, well, the best, there's lots of great agent. Great. Do you, do you believe you're the right agent for the job of selling or helping someone buy a particular home? All right. Number two, you believe you can get the job done. Now, if, if you have a belief that possibly you don't think you can get the job done, well, then who can you lean on? Who can you, who can you have help you, assist you, work with you to help you with that? So sometimes early on in my career, because I can see there's a few of you who are newer to the business. And I say newer, you can be two or three years in the business. To me, that's new, having now done this for 29 years. I would say that as you're newer, I had to lean in on people that I had more belief in, on regards to helping me get the job done. So whether that's leaning on my belief, a John Syatt, a Jeremy Laguerre, a Ruby a Batia, a, a, a Jason Carlson, a Russ Orchard, you know, a Nick Manville, are you leaning in on your beliefs with those individuals that they help you to realize that there's no, an no question you can't get answered, there's no problem you can't get through, there's no challenges that you can't overcome because you have the right team behind you that's assembled. So although you may not know every answer, you know the answer can be found by the team that's assembled behind you. And that became a really important thing 29 years ago for my business. When I realized I didn't know the answers to everything, but I knew I could get the job done. And as long as I assembled the right team behind me, I knew everything would be okay. So I just wanted you to think about that for a minute. Have you considered the team that you have behind you, the people that are there to help you get through things? If you need to make a phone call to a particular client, if you need to get a price reduction, if you're not sure the answers of a compliant question, compliance question, you, know, you have answers all around you if you're resourceful. And I've often said this, there are not lazy people, there's just unresourceful people. If you're even feeling like you're lazy, well, who are you using as a resource to get you dialed in into working you through what's motivating you, moving you, pushing you to be better than you were the day before? That has a lot to do with being resourceful. So are you using your resources of the company, the leadership, and the people that are there to help you? And then the third belief that I just want to remind us of before we get into these two core, three core things I want to visit with you about is, do you believe that it's a good time to buy or sell real estate? You know, it, it, it is a very fascinating question to me right now. And I say fascinating because it's all over the spectrum. I've got agents who would say, well, I wouldn't buy now. I've got agents who would say, I would for sure buy now. I've got sellers who would say, or clients and friends and even other agents who say, well, I wouldn't sell now. I'm gonna I would wait. Okay. And there's other agents and people who would say, I got to sell now. What if it goes down further? Well, they're both right. And they're both right because fundamentally it has to do with a belief. Do you believe that, the, is, that it is a good time to buy or sell a piece of property? Well, if you believe that it's a good reason, then a good time to do so, I would challenge you with the idea that you can foster that belief. You can develop that belief. You can create a stronger belief that it's a good time to buy or sell a piece of property. Now, some people will say, well, but George, but interest rates. Well, yeah, but we were complaining about the fact that there was no inventory, even though rates were low and people couldn't find a home that they could actually buy. On the flip side, You'll see, you see the fact that people were, uh, you know, were, were, were going crazy and driving prices up out of control. So here we have a market with rates that are a little bit higher, prices that have kind of calmed down, and people are still complaining. The fact is, is that if you're that person who's going to complain, you're just simply going to complain about everything. But can you find the goodness and the reasons why it's a good thing to buy a piece of property or sell a piece? 
sell a property today? And the answer is, I know you can. You can look at the tax benefits. You can look at the fact that prices have gone down and stabilized a little better than they've been because they just kept ratcheting up. You can look at uh, all sorts of stuff. You can you can look at and you can see from that standpoint that it can be a good time to buy from taxes to stabilization of values to what, how do you counter the fact if rates are high? Well, you could do two on buy downs. You could do an arm. You could be of the expectation you're going to refinance at some point. There's all sorts of reasons why you could figure out why it's good to buy or good to sell. If you have a decision within you, a belief within you, a declaration within you that says it is a great time to buy or sell a piece of property. Now, scientists, and I'm no scientist, <laughs> I am a sales guy, but scientists will say there's what we call confirmation bias. Now, if I was to explain confirmation bias, it is this. Once you've concluded on something, you then begin to believe that everything that about everything about what you're talking about, everything that you're looking at, when you have confirmation bias, you simply believe it because you declared it. And so all the data, all the things you continue to look at are in relationship to what you've confirmed to believe to be true. So if you, here's a good example. If if you believe the world was flat, you would try to give me all the reasons why you can't see the Earth's curvature. You can't, you know, if if you if you believe that the theory of relativity, right, that 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 things uh, gravity, right, falls at the same thing. Right, Isaac Newton, right, discovered that a feather falls as fast as a lead weight, and people said, no, 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 let me. They would try to confirm he was wrong. They threatened him with the church and told him he was evil for saying such things because they were so biased. Well, in this scenario, I want you to be biased. I want you to be biased that you're the best agent, biased that you can get the job done, biased that it's a good time to buy or sell property. And then you confirm that biasness by different things. You, you confirm it by t testing it. You confirm it by the taxes. You confirm it by the P they could refinance. You confirm it that rates and prices have gone down. You confirm it. And so you become very biased in the idea. And that's a good thing when we're talking about your belief system. I want you to be biased. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to not discount yourself, if that makes sense. Okay. So with that, I just wanted to share that belief in yourself, belief you can get the job done, and belief that it is a good thing to buy. Declare those beliefs and begin to foster, develop the new beliefs so they become more grounded, they can become stronger, they become more intensified as to what you believe because you've confirmed it. You're biased in the idea that it's a good thing to do. Buy, sell, you're the right agent, and you can get the job done. All right, so let's jump Let's switch gears just a little bit here. There's three things I've written down today that I want to talk to you. So as you can imagine, almost every day, people are struggling. Every day, people are succeeding. And so the question I've been posing, which I'm going to talk about more next week at, on the 18th of March or May to our uh, one-day summit. Again, some of you just jumped on. If you can go to a few hours of it or all of it, just make sure you show up. But there's one question that I've been asking myself. How is it that some agents are having high levels of success and why is it that some are not? What's the difference? What is it that they are doing? What is it that you could be doing that could be different that makes it to where, okay, I'm going to figure this thing out. I'm going to get it done. With that being said, I want you to really consider the impact of a few things. And I want you to really listen to what I'm sharing with you because I'm telling you at this point, guys, I've had over 50,000 coaching sessions with agents in my career. 50,000 plus. It's probably closer to 60. It is thousands of times I have sat down with agents and 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 got to know their psychology, their mindset, their belief systems, their excuses. Uh there are good things they do, the bad things they do, the dumb things they do, the great things they do. And I'd have to say at this point, I would have to have been or am a complete idiot if I didn't see that there was patterns and pathways in which to do this business successfully. And so I, again, this morning, I had written down 
three core things I wanted to share with you. And we're gonna, I want to get into a little bit of depth in each one of these. Here's the, here's the first one. Now, if you had an opportunity to watch the morning meeting, I'm not going to spend as much time on number one, but number two and three, I am. But here's number one. And if you're writing or taking notes, write it down. Number one, I must choose to focus on the right things. That's it. I must choose to focus on the right things. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to focus on the right stuff? Well, it means just like I talked about beliefs, focus on our home selling, uh, focusing on how much success we're going to have when we prospect. We're going to focus on all sorts of things. And I talked earlier today about focusing on the things you control and don't control or like, you know, you have personal focus and then getting others to focus on the right stuff. And in fairness, that's what I'm doing today. I want to get you to focus on the right stuff. So here's that first point, focus. I want you to focus on the right things. Now, this is the mindset of, do you focus on the glass half full or half empty? Uh, do you focus on the pain of the moment or the beauty of the, 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 the future? Do you focus on the challenges of the day or do you focus on how to solve them? Do you focus on the, the negativity of today's marketplace or do you focus on how skilled you are and how your mindset is so tough and your disciplines are so strong? That it's not you're not going to miss a beat because of it. So much of our lives is a life where we are not focused, we are not listening, we are not seen, we are not awake. And so the key here is to wake up. The key here is to truly have an experience where you're conscious, you're awake, you know what's going on because you're paying attention. Well, when you start to realize that, you start to realize that, wait a second here, maybe I'm not focusing on the right stuff. And if you're not, let's change that. It's real simple. You change it. Now, one of the stories I've often told for years about focus is this. Number one story of all time for me. I'll be playing golf with a bunch of buddies, and all of a sudden, we'll come up on a tee box. So we're about to tee off, and we're sitting there right on the tee box. And I'll say things like, wow. There's a, there's a, in fact, there's a, there's a great, great uh, little course up in it's called Valley View up in uh, near Ogden, Clearfield. And there's a hole that is just awesome in regards to this. And it's the third hole at Valley View, if you're familiar with the golf course. And on the left is a marsh, water, reeds, water, swamp. You know, you don't want your ball over there. And on the right side of hole number three, it is completely tree lined with a bunch of pine trees. And so when I'm with my buddies, I always will say something like to a Jeremy Laguerre or another few buddies of mine uh, or my son, I'll say, wow, there sure is a lot of water on the left and you don't want to be there, but you got other problems on the right. You got water, you got, you see, you got pine trees and everything. So, well, good luck. I hope you hit it well. And of course they know me well enough and they'll laugh and go tell me to, you know, go pound sand and get out of there and stop talking to them. But I get them to pay attention to the water and to the trees. And what's the one thing they're not paying attention to? Oh, you mean the middle of the fairway where they want their ball to be. And you say, well, that's mean. Well, of course it's mean, but it's my buddies. I got to harass them. And my point is, is that I can get someone to focus on the trees, focus on the water, focus on the swamp, focus on being stymied under the trees. But the one thing they don't focus on because they're not really even aware is where's the middle of the fairway. And that's where I'm going to make sure my ball ends up. Now, do we do, do any of us do this perfect? No, but I can tell you one thing. It gets a lot easier if you're awake, if you're not asleep at the wheel, if you're really listening, paying attention and you're awake, what you'll find is that you pay attention. You'll find, wait a second here. I'm saying some really mean stuff to myself. I'm, 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 I'm really discouraged by this market. And, and then you try to act all positive, but you've been ravaging in this negativity of the market. Well, what if, and what if this doesn't work? And what about that? And I made mistakes here and I should have done this and I should have done that. Well, in the midst of all of that, that's great, but you still have the problem. The problem is, is we need to sell some more real estate. So again, I come back to where I'm coming from on this, which is what do you choose to focus on? And man, if I haven't beaten this one dead between this morning and today, I'm telling you, you have a choice. Don't forget that. You have a choice to focus on whatever you choose to focus on. 
So don't give me this nonsense that people are forcing you to do things. They're not, because you have a mind and you have a choice. Don't forget that. Okay, so again, point this, choose wisely. Other point I've made this, be awake. Wake up. Wake up. Right? Start paying attention. Don't go through life dead and asleep and oblivious. And you know, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance just brings pain, agony, and suffering. Ignorance is not bliss. All right. So, so the key here is we got to choose to focus. Now, the second thing is, well, then what is that? What is our activity level? Here's here's the second thing. The agents who I'm seeing succeed at the highest levels right now. Like there's agents who are succeeding so well. I was walking into the building today and there's an agent there. And I won't tell you the agent, but they said, yeah, my first quarter was really rough on me, but I just closed three deals in the last six days. I'm like, yes, good job, man. That's so good for you. I mean, congratulations. I said, well, what happened? What's different? He's like, well, you know, I started doing some things different. And what did they do differently? Started prospecting. Uh, started doing the things, calling, calling, and speaking with the right people. So, again, prospecting your sphere. Now, there's two groups of people. There's the people you know. There's the people you don't know. And I always ask, which group is bigger? Oh, the people that you don't know. So, although you have a group of people that you know, you know, 500 people, whatever it is. You have a group of 300 people, 100 people. You have a group of people you know. You have to be communicating with them. You have to be. You've got to put your focus there on your prospecting, on your door knocks, on the, even the flyers, the mailers, the newsletters, calling your sphere, texting them, videos that you give, that you, you know, give your accolades and great gratitudes and thankfulness to them. That's how you get the deals when you go back to this prospecting stuff. You got to prospect. We are not, just as a reminder, we are not, we are not in the direct, we are not in the retail business. We are in the direct sales business. The retail business is people are always calling you, which is always great when you're real estate, someone calls you, but you can't bank your entire career and your future on that. You can't bank the idea that for sure someone's going to call you today, but what I can guarantee is you calling someone today. What I can guarantee is you knocking doors today. What I can guarantee is you call your sphere today. You're, it's entirely up to you. But, but if you get really clear on what it takes to succeed, you'll start to realize prospecting has to be part of it. All right. And then the third thing I want to visit with you. So remember, I, they've, I, there's literally a double downing of prospecting, a double downing of where do you choose to focus? And the third thing, what are you going to double down on? Protecting your mindset. So one, kudos for being on this call. Number one. Number two, you need to do even more than this call. You got to make sure that you shape this mindset, this mental side of your game, this, this belief system, mental toughness. You, you have to make sure that you have that dialed in, all right? You have to make sure that you dial this in. Now, with that being said, I think it's very, very, very important for you to recognize that there is not one part of this business that's not fixable. There's not one part of this business that you can't do. There's not one part of this business that you can't refine and get better at. There's not one part of this business that you cannot succeed in. So if that's the case, then just ask yourself, man, where is my focus? Have I doubled it down on the right stuff? Man, wh wh where is my prospecting? I, am I really getting in, dialing this thing in? I hope you are. I really hope you are. And then last, what is your mindset? What are you listening to? What are you listen, reading? What are you watching? Who are you spending your time with? What do you, what, you know, it, it, you, you start looking at all these things, you start realize, oh my goodness, I, I have the power to control my outcomes, my future. Yes, yes, you do. You are the navigator, the captain of your ship. And if you recognize that, then it's like, man, okay, hold on. You mean I'm in charge? Yep, you're in charge. You are in charge. So when we start talking about focus, prospecting, and of course, so important, your mindset, and you bring that all together and say, okay, I've got the right beliefs. I'm the best agent. I'm going to get the job done. And I am going to make sure 
that they understand this is an exceptional time to buy a home or to sell one based on the situation, even of our economy, based on that situation of the economy, you can get this dialed in. All right, with that in closing, I just want to remind you, you are in charge of you. And I always appreciate Jim Rohn's statement. I'll take care of me for you. You take care of you for me. I'm like, when I first heard that, I was like, whoa, you mean I'm supposed to take care of myself from my mental side of it, my physical side of it, my emotional, my heart? Yeah, you're supposed to take care of your mind, your body, and your emotions. Because as I've said for years, the only thing that matters is that you prospect right now. But here's the challenge with prospecting. People think that they should be able to make very few contacts to have success. And I'm just simply here to tell you, gang, you got to do more than that. You got to get really serious about your prospecting. You got to get really serious about protecting your mindset and elevate it. It's why I want you at the summit next week. It's why I want you to, to, to making sure that, that you really get this, that, that, that you realize that who I'm becoming what I listen to, what I watch and what I read and who I spend my time with and seminars and events. And you got to figure this out because if you don't, the consequences are pretty extreme that meaning you won't be in this business. And I don't want that. And I don't think you want that. I want you here. But the only way you get from here to there is you got to make sure you focus on the right stuff, protect your mind and recognizing that what you say to the public has everything to do with what's going on in here, inside of you. And if you recognize that, then you begin to realize, man, it doesn't matter how bad this market gets. It doesn't matter how good it gets because I'm going to win no matter what. I would challenge you in closing. You must, you must take the time to master your craft. You must take the time to understand what it really means to be an extraordinary salesperson. I don't care how many events you go to. I don't care if it's Everest coaching. I don't care if it's other trainers. I am telling you, no matter what it is you're doing, the most important thing that you could do, the most important thing that you could do is that you recognize that you're in charge of your own life. And once you recognize that, gang, everything comes together. So don't underestimate who you are, what you're capable of. Don't underestimate your beliefs. Don't underestimate these three areas of focus prospecting and mindset do not underestimate what you're capable of and where you can take your life it is always a gift to be with you it reminds me of what i need to be doing and i hope that it was well received as to what i believe that you should be doing and i have to tell you that if you haven't had one you will have one midlife crises will happen in your life and i've often wondered is it really that there's a midlife crisis or is it just someone what i like to say is Someone who responsibly tries to unfold, unmask, reproportionate or fix, realign, reset the way they're living their life. So if you call that a midlife crisis, I've probably had 10 of them. But what is a real crisis is I'm unwilling to stay the way things are. I'm going to prospect differently. I'm going to knock doors differently. I'm going to speak differently on the phone. I'm going to do what's necessary to win the game of real estate. But the beauty is it's not just about winning the game of real estate, even though we might say it. It's the beauty of who you have to become to sell whatever number of real estate deals you want to do. That's the beauty of real estate. Okay? Now, um, just recognize how strong you are how great you are, how grand you are, how beautiful you are, how amazing you are, and recognize the future is bright. Oh, it's so bright. There's so many good things that are happening. Don't underestimate who you are. Don't underestimate what's possible. Dream, go big, match it up with your activity, match it up with your prospecting, your sphere of influence, match your activity with these dreams, these goals, and these most sacred aspirations you have, and go for it. Go see what's possible for you. And I'm looking at this list on here, and there's so much that's possible for every one of you. I just hope, truly hope, because that's all I can do. I can't force you. I can't make you. But I truly hope that you will take everything it takes to get this thing figured out. And that you will do what needs to be done to go live the life you're destined to live. 
I just can't tell you how much I appreciate each one of you, how grateful I am for each one of you, how much I love each one of you. And even if I don't know you, man, I've been doing this long enough to watch the battle, the trials that you're going through. I have so much compassion, so much empathy for what we all go through to do what we do. So again, know I love you, know how grateful I am for each one of you. Uh, I'm always here for you. I'm just a phone call away if you need something. And just recognize that you are born to do extraordinary things. I actually leave you with this last little story. And that is, just think about this. Two greatest moments of one's life, the day they were born and the day they figured out why. But I like another little caveat. And that is, you really start living once you realize this is the only life that you have. Sometimes we're not living this life to its fullest because we simply believe that, well, this is secondary to everything in the future. This life is a gift. Honor it. Honor it with your activities. Honor it by taking care of yourself. Honor it by going and living the dreams you're capable of living and doing the deals you're capable of doing because of who you've become. Remember, remember, remember. Like, wake up and recognize you are in control, you are in charge, and it is all for you for the taking. Okay, guys, have an extraordinary day. Go kill it. Have an extraordinary week. Go make it happen. And uh, it's going to be a great week. Next week, I hope to see every one of you at that summit. Make sure you get signed up, okay? All right, guys, talk to you soon.